I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting that dots. Like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in the trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And, it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with it. That should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. No, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Burrow? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? A broke back mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, wear, the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, oh, gosh. This guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers come. Come on, David. would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen. Man, you know, strong brothers. Why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant. I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right. Fine. Think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later. The whole new scene. How, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? You know, it's like, so... You got to take a stand. It's not a game. It's a red stand. history. He's a wild guy. He once shot a <laughs> and killed him in Walmart. Oh, this is true. Google it. The baby shot and killed a in Walmart in North Carolina. Nothing bad happened to his career. <laughs> Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> in our country, you can shoot and kill a but you better not hurt a gay person's feelings. I ask you, where do you stand on the issue? How do you feel about the special? Should it be cancelled? Anything like that? I feel like Dave freed the slaves. Oh, you do? Yeah, the comedian. We were slaves to PC culture, and he just, you know, like, as an artist, he's Van Gogh. Cut his ear off. And wow. He's trying to tell us it's okay. So, going forward, can you, can you be a bit more risque or... Are you more free to be yourself, are you saying? I've always been free. Right. But um, I just think he's saying, you know what, with all that I have, I'm not afraid to lose it for the sake of free of freeness of speech. You can't, you know, you can't just edit yourself. You know, comedians, we're like, I don't know, Mercedes makes a great car. Right. But they got to crash a lot of them before they perfect it. You know, the, the, the Netflix special was this brand new car though, you know what I mean? This was his polished jokes and people think that like the LGBT community in particular very offended, doesn't find it funny, thinks it's too fast, thinks it's bad for kids who are growing up and worried about that sort of stuff. I can't, I can't speak about the content of the show, but what I say is there's a bigger conversation we need to have. Right. Somebody needs to look us in the eye and go, you're no longer free in this country. You're not free to say what you want. You, you say what we want you to say. Otherwise, we will 
cancel you. Right. That's the discussion we should have. And Dave Chappelle is like the poster child for like comedians and you he's know. A unicorn. He's a amazing. Yeah. Van Gogh. He's the Van Gogh. Hey. This is Dave. He tells jokes for a living. Driving down these country roads is a lot like a meditation. He's deep in thought. Back in the trance. Five specials in as many years. How do you close a body of work that profound? I couldn't imagine the enormity of the pressure. And then... He looks as if he's about to say something. What could he possibly have left to say? Will you shut the fuck up, Morgan Freeman? Sorry. I was, I was just... just... It's all right. facing some backlash once again for including jokes about transgender people and the LGBTQ community in a television special. He has a new Netflix special out where he jokes about trans women's looks, about genitalia, tells a story about beating up a lesbian woman. Now Chappelle says that he is Team TERF, T-E-R-F, referencing the term for trans exclusionary radical feminist. Here's some of it. Cancel J.K. Rowling, my God. J.K. Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books by herself. She sold so many books, the Bible worries about her. <laughs> and they canceled her because she said in an interview, and this is not exactly what she said, but effectually, she said, the gender was a fact. And then the trans community got mad as They started calling her a TERF. So I looked it up. <laughs> TERF is an acronym. Stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. I'm Team TERF. I agree. I agree, man. Gender is a fact. All right, so joining me now is activist and writer Raquel Willis. Raquel, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, so let's talk about some things here and why there's been such criticism and see um, what you come up with, what we come up with here. Because he made the jokes. The critics are saying, look, look, you have to consider what's happening during this last historic year of anti-transgender legislation introduced at least thir in 33 states, less than a year after a record high number of transgender people. Most of them trans women of color were killed. So what did you think? What, and you have to keep in mind, he is a comedian, right? But what did you and so what did you think when you heard this? Well, when I watched the special, um, I felt kind of disheartened that he was continuing this attack on the trans community. Now, I, I think we love to say, oh, comedians are just telling jokes. Like, that's what they do. But I, I think it ignores the fact that they have platforms and those platforms, the rhetoric that they espouse has real world consequences for a lot of cisgender straight people who don't know trans people in their everyday life their first interaction with trans people is through the media. It's through what they watch, through what they read. And so the only things that they hear are these constant misconceptions about our experiences, demonizing words about who we are, saying that we're not women, if we're a trans woman, saying that trans men are not men and on and on then they're going to actually bring that into their everyday lives. And that's why we see high rates of violence. 38, at least 38 trans and gender nonconforming folks have been murdered this year. We will continue to see more pieces of legislation put forth that actually impact young trans people. And so I, I think that's also the other thing, too, is that people get so fixated on the adjective of trans, right, the trans part of it. But we are human. And I think that Chappelle did a sloppy job of speaking to our humanity. Yeah, there is a part in there where he talks about his friend, right? And he said, his friend said, you know, I'm not asking you to, um, to understand. I'm just asking you to, to listen. And I'm telling you that I'm having this experience and that I'm a, I'm a human being. So did you, is there any part that is redemptive in there? Or is there anything you would like to, if you had a discussion with Chappelle, would you, what would you say to him? Well, I think what's unfortunate is that he has not really grappled with the fact that as a black cisgender straight man, 
he could have easily used his platform to talk about the tensions that exist within our own community as black folks, right? I think that there's a way that he and other black cisgender straight comedians kind of gloss over the fact that black LGBTQ plus folks exist. And so it's easy for him to paint the LGBTQ plus community as purely just a white community. You know, there are all these ideas that queerness and transness, all these different things are white inventions. And that's just not true. Black LGBTQ plus folks have always existed. And I really wish he didn't spend so much time only focusing on the fact that there are white people within our community because it lets him get off the hook. He doesn't have to held himself accountable for the transphobia and homophobia that exists within our own community. Well, let's uh, like some of the terms that you're talking about, like cis and all of that, and, and people may not be familiar with, and it's our job to educate people, right? So I just want to, and, and to talk and tell people what gender identity is in transgender. So let's set the record straight just so that people know that um, it talks about gender. Gender identity is one's innermost concept of self as male, female, a blend of both or neither, how individuals perceive themselves and what they call themselves. One's gender identity can be the same or different from their sex assigned at birth. And then there is transgender, which is an umbrella term for people whose gender identity and or expression is different from cultural expectations based on the sex that they were assigned at birth. So when Chappelle says gender is a fact, what do you think of that? Well, I think he, along with a lot of the trans exclusionary radical feminists or TERFs that he brought up, like to put forth this idea that trans people are saying that gender does not exist. That is completely antithetical to what many of us are actually saying. We're actually saying that gender is more complex than most people think. Gender and sex are things, but they aren't the exact same thing. And so the way that you are assigned at birth, maybe based on genitalia or whatever, is not the same way that femininity and on, so on and so forth. So we're really saying that these things are more complex and it's actually not just trans people having a gender experience. Everybody is having a more complicated gender experience. I remember years ago, you couldn't see women disrobed as they are today. Even if there were homosexuals in our community, they didn't parade themselves before the world. They would hide it because the average person would not countenance homosexuality or lesbianism. But look at Hollywood, how it promotes it. Look at how cross-dressing is being uh, advised and many great black strong men have been asked to put on women's clothes. For what? They're selling a thought to black people that it's all right to be other than yourself. You remember when I spoke of Medea, I never saw brother Tyler Perry as a man that was promoting cross-dressing. I saw him promoting Medea, that great woman in the life of black people. Of course, it was done in a comic way, but nevertheless, the scriptures of the Bible teach against women dressing like men and it teaches against men dressing like women. And even in the Old Testament, the punishment for so doing was death under the law of Moses. Hollywood, you all know the Torah. You know what God has said, but you are promoting evil. You are promoting that which is against the will and the way of God and you're doing it purposely not so much for your people but you know that we are to receive the kingdom after God takes it from you and you hate the fact that our rule is going to come whether you like it or not 
the kingdom will be taken from you and given to this rejected stone this black man that God has chosen to be his people you know this so you want to feed us all the filth that we can eat all the debauchery that we can stand so you are now bringing the privacy of sex into public uh, view in your movies in your magazines in your newspapers it's all about sex titillating the people of America particularly our young people to get involved in the kind of behavior that they can uh, see on internet they can see it in the movies and it's very difficult for parents even to close their children off from the filth that is abounding in the society even down to cartoons you are promoting that which is against the will and commandments of God you are promoting lying you're promoting stealing you're promoting cross-dressing you're promoting lesbianism and homosexuality sexuality you are doing this purposely and the scripture says Satan has made evil fair seeming to the people so we are so confused today we think it's all right because the scripture says God is love and I'm in love and love has to be right because love is of God see how you have deceived yourself and now you will be angry with me and say oh Farrakhan you're homophobic you hate gay people and lesbians that's false I'm in love with my people I'm in love with you regardless of how you present yourself I have never disrespected you I have had teachers of my violin that are gay I never disrespected them nor did they disrespect themselves in my presence I was educated by a gay person in Detroit because I spoke ugly about uh, lesbianism and homosexuality and he was hurt and when I came to Detroit he asked to see me and I remember his listening to my lecture and he came to the private quarters that I had and I let him in and we sat and talked and he wanted to change his way of life and he gave me guidance in he didn't know he was guiding me but he was telling me about the language that I used it was the same with rabbis that I sat down and talked with they had dinner in my home and they told me that some of my language was hurtful to them they didn't know it but later I told this former chief rabbi Dean of the rabbis in Chicago that what he told me I thought about it I'm not interested in making white people enemies of ours I'm not interested in stirring up hatred in you for me or for us but I have to give you the message whether you hear or forbear so I try now to be more careful in the way I speak because it is not my desire to hurt your feelings but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says truth hurts but it only hurts the guilty and I remember brother Malcolm one day when he was lecturing at a college and uh, the people started hissing the Caucasians against him and he said oh that's what your father did in the garden and he said whenever a man throws a stone in a pack of dogs the only one that hollers is the one that gets hit and today if I don't preach the truth to try to save your life I will lose mine and if I don't warn you of what the consequences are 
and you continue in what you're doing with no desire even to change because you think you are living right this enemy is a scientist of evil he's studying bacteriology and chemistry in such a way that he can change you chemically to think you are what you are not he's a wise Satan that's who you're dealing with you're not dealing with just common wicked man you're dealing with the Satan the God of this world and he's after you black man and woman to take you down with him when he goes let me go on with that subject because the strong black men are being asked by Hollywood to put on dresses. Strong black men are offered lots of money. I won't name the person, but the manager of a certain strong black man came to me and begged me, please talk to the one that I'm managing, for they have offered him $15 million to cross dress, to dress like a woman in a movie, and I don't want him to do that. Could you talk with him? But the scripture says, money answereth all things, and so $15 million, a man will put on a dress in a heartbeat. Well, white people put on dresses too, but they're not after their own, they're after you. You remember Dave Chappelle? How he said that uh, he was in his dressing room and when he took a break and went back in his dressing room, there was a dress on the uh, door and he thought he was in the wrong uh, place. And then a man came in and said, oh, we got a real funny scene. And, and, and it's, a, it's around this dress. Dave, put on the dress. Dave said, I, I, I'm not putting on the dress. That man went out and then uh, a higher ranking person came and told Dave, oh Dave, it's just a, a short scene, but it is hilarious and it will go over big in the audience. And Dave then said, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to put on a dress. Then the producer himself came and said, uh, Dave, I mean, it's really a funny scene. Come on, Dave. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't put on that dress. And he said, when they left, they came back within a very short time. They had already written the real scene, but they wanted to get him to put on a dress because what they're selling black brother is that they want you to be so wrapped up in what they're wrapped up in that you will stick your fingers in your ear when you hear the warning and the call of God and when you do that you will go down to hell with your enemies oh my dear brothers and sisters the enemy is after you this generation shall not pass before all these things come to pass as it is written in the scriptures resist the devil and he will flee from you but you're acting so weak that when you know he's leading you to something that you should not do, you don't resist because you want the fame, you want the money, you want the job, you want nearness to your enemies. Remember how Satan took Jesus up on a mountain and showed him all of the cities that he could have if only he would bow down to Satan. 
mountain here means he takes you up to a high place because that's where you want to be in sport in play in music in science in medicine you want to be on the mountain top but the man that's taking you there is the God of this world and as he said to Jesus if you would bow down and worship me you can have all of this but Jesus had the strength to say to Satan get thee behind me Satan and that is where Satan belongs he doesn't belong in front of you leading you you need to put him not only behind you but put him out of the equation altogether God is present today and if you really want to go up in strength and power and wealth and righteousness remember Satan only promises you to deceive you I have three dogs in this fight so let me start there I'm black I am a comedian and I am transgendered. So I have three dogs in this fight and I want to be fair to each and every one of those platforms. What I heard from Dave Chappelle's latest special was the, the overpouring of racism that he talked about because I understand that he's talked about the transgender community and some of the things were painful to hear but funny because as a comedian that is our safe place. That is where we are the safest on stage where we should feel like we should be able to say anything. Nina Simone said it best. How can you be an artist and not speak about the times? He says it in socially inappropriate ways that people say is not politically correct, but it's teachable moments. And there was no lies told. Here's the hypocrisy for me, Don. And I love my community, LGBTQ plus IA, and I'm saying it correctly because I am still a comedian first. But I'm going to be respectful tonight to everyone involved because I have a three, three dogs in this fight. The, the love of me as a comedian will always be in me, but I can hide that. The transgender person that I identify as will always be in me, but I can hide that. But the black person in me, I can never hide. I, I hate the fact that we keep skirting around. So here it is, the hypocrisy. Dave Chappelle gave his friend, his words, his friend who was white and transgender, uh, who wanted to be a comedian, an opportunity to open for him. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest to do it of our time right now. That was a huge opportunity to, to, for her. The LGBT community never reached out to give her any opportunity like that. But then they turned and said that he was transphobic, he was homophobic, that all the backlash that he received from two or three episodes ago from specials. And she stood with her friend, the transgender woman, and stood with against Dave to say, no, he's not like that. And we'll, we'll, the LGBTQIA plus community bashed this woman so bad that she jumped off a building and killed herself. Dave was not responsible for that. So who is? Because McClain, here's we don't the know, thing, McClain, uh, say, we don't know. We don't know exactly why she killed herself. But anyway, go on. I'm sorry. Uh, her constitution and my constitution are very different. The backlash at me, I'm not going to do that. But here's the thing. Who are we blaming for that? You're not blaming Dave. Dave gave her an opportunity that the community did not give her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Listen, uh, Dave Chappelle is saying, quite honestly, what a lot of people think. They don't understand um, the trans community and how people may identify. Is that a fair statement? That, I, I think that's very fair. And I think that he has opened up an opportunity for us to come to the table and have real conversations, Don, about this. The problem is we keep sending disgruntled, angry people with the fist balls up and they face that with an attitude to come to the table. If you come to the table already with an attitude, you will never hear what I'm saying and I will never hear what you're saying. If we don't take the time to have real conversations with real people in the community that represent, you can't come with an already agenda. So we can let down the smoke screen between us and them so that we'll just be in us. He pretty much said that we are so much more alike than we are different. And I'm telling you, you hear what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. You had to know that Dave Chappelle was cool than who he is because Dave Chappelle walked away from $50 million a few years ago. It is in the Bible and it says, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Hey, the Flynn. money was never the problem. He came back. Yes. L let me ask you this, um, because I've heard your stand up and you say that we fight over the wrong things. We get too hung up on titles yes. and even as African-Americans and as members of the LGBTQ mm -hmm plus community, that we get too hung up on things that are, let's, look, you call people what they want to be called, that's how I feel. But we can have these discussions, yeah, and, but, and, but we get too hung up on, you know, 
titles and letters and well what what, what is what, what it was just kind of like the democratic party to me are we trying to win the war of these little battles and here's the thing there are going to be two sides of history with the transgender community there's the disgruntled angry side that is still fighting over bathroom wars and pronouns and and these th these minute rights and then there's the side of history where we have a state senator sarah mcbride in delaware joe biden appointed a doctor who is a, a transgender woman sir uh, uh, mj rodriguez just made history by being nominated as the first transgender actress actress to be nominated for a lead role in TV. So there's two sides of history. We're going one way, and then we're being pulled back the other way only by us. And then we're being pulled back the other way only by us. You know what they say, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain. And unfortunately, I feel like that's the case with Dave Chappelle. And I say that as a gigantic Dave Chappelle fan, a former Dave Chappelle fan. I grew up with Chappelle show. He was my favorite comedian, favorite celebrity, period. I basically worshiped him. I was I was a simp. I was a stan. I loved it. Me and my friends loved it. I've seen every single episode, every single stand-up special. He introduced me to hip-hop artists that I hadn't previously known about, Talib Kweli, Mo Steph. I loved Dave Chappelle. But I noticed that as he grows older, becomes wealthier, he gets more and more out of touch and elitist. And that's starting to be reflected in his comedy. I mean, he was always edgy. He always was intentionally offensive, but there's a difference between, uh, you know, being offensive and edgy and crossing the line while punching up and being edgy and offensive and punching down at people who are marginalized and in a pretty bad state. So this headline from Mediaite says a lot. We'll dive into the article, but this is what they say. Dave Chappelle says he's team turf, defends JK Rowling and the baby in latest special. Quote, gender is a fact. First of all, I don't know what that means. Gender is a fact. Gender is a social construct. There's a difference between sex and gender. So right off the bat, by him making that statement, you can tell that he's ignorant. He's uninformed. We are the ones who create a gender. I mean, look at the gender reveal parties, right? Uh, we dictate that anyone who's born uh, with a vagina should be wearing pink. They should act feminine. They should wear dresses. They should have long hair. Anyone who's born with a penis should act masculine, uh, like the color blue, uh, be a certain way. These are traits that we ascribe to people before they're even born. That's what gender is. It's a social construct. It's different than what is between your legs. So for him to say gender is a fact, yeah, I mean, gender exists. That's a fact. But gender ultimately is a social construct and gender is what we as a culture say that it is. So he doesn't even understand the basic difference between sex and gender. That's apparent through this. And immediately before we get into the article, I know people are going to say, well, look, I mean, it's, it's a comedy bit. He's just a comedian. Why are people so easily offended? Well, look, it's easy for you to say that if you don't have any skin in the game. It's easy for you to say that if you don't have someone in your family who's trans or you're not trans yourself. Trans people are under assault in this country, culturally, legislatively. In this year alone, there have been dozens of bills introduced in legislatures across the country targeting trans youth. Black trans women are susceptible to murder. This is a huge issue. So for him to attack trans people and for people to react to the backlash by dismissing it, I mean, you would feel differently if you knew someone who is transgender. I'll just say that. But let's get to the article here. So Leah Idlibby of Mediaite writes, Dave Chappelle has declared himself Team TERF, the acronym for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. On Tuesday, the comedian dropped The Closer, his sixth stand-up special for Netflix, in which he declared gender is a fact, adding, every human being in this room, every human being on Earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. That is a fact. Chappelle unable to differentiate between sex and gender, as the former refers to biology while the latter is attached to one's identity, went on to make explicit jokes about the anatomy of transgender women comparing their genitals to vegan burger substitutes. The comedian additionally showed his support for JK Rowling, defending her against being canceled for multiple transphobic remarks, which led people to identify her as a turf. I'm team turf, Chappelle exclaimed. I agree. I agree, man. Gender is a fact. After telling a joke at the expense of the transgender community, Chappelle vowed that he was done telling LGBTQ plus jokes until he was sure that they were laughing together. Yeah. And that's some inside insight there. He knows that LGBTQ plus people aren't laughing with him. He's laughing at them. He's making jokes at their expense. And that's not to say that you can't joke about trans issues and LGBTQ plus issues, but I don't really want to hear a cis person make transgender jokes in the same way that I don't want to hear a white dude make black jokes. Trans jokes can be hilarious. Gay jokes can be hilarious, but they're best told from people from that community. And perhaps a straight person can make a gay joke if they put it in context, if there's understanding of the history of discrimination and bigotry. But I mean, it depends, right? There's, there's nuance, but this isn't a case of, 
I'm laughing at transgender people, but I also have an understanding of their community and the suffering that they're going through and the marginalization that they experience. It's just, I'm laughing at them and they're silly. It's just being a dick. It's, it's punching down. This isn't, this isn't funny. This is maybe funny to some people, but that doesn't make it any less insensitive. And when I hear him double down here, this is kind of the sense that I get. This is all speculative, but this is my impression. So I watched his last special and that's when he made transgender jokes and they weren't even original jokes. I think he literally, if I'm remembering correctly, made a variation of the I identify as an Apache attack helicopter joke. I think he said, oh, well, if you can identify as anything, I identify as Chinese. It's the same fucking joke. And we've heard it time and again. And I think that he knew about the pushback and the criticism that he received. And rather than trying to be introspective, he chose to double down, become more hardline in his transphobic beliefs. That's what they are. That's that's transphobia. That's how it manifests. And it's it's really sad. But when he associates himself with Joe Rogan, who's explicitly transphobic, with Elon Musk, I mean, we saw that photograph. Like, these are the folks who he's associated with, these edgelords who are stupid, they're elitist, they're out of touch. I mean, you can see how his worldview is getting skewed. He went from an edgy outsider to someone who's saying the same shit. Oh, these comedians are getting canceled. We can't even tell jokes. Can you though? Because you're telling these jokes. JK Rowling is canceled, but is she though? She's still publishing books. She's still a multimillionaire. Uh, I just feel like cancel culture doesn't really have that much of an impact. Really what we're seeing is accountability. We're seeing criticism and perhaps some people do get permanently canceled, but oftentimes when we do see permanent cancellations, it's usually warranted. I think that everyone can agree it's good that Harvey Weinstein was canceled or R. Kelly was canceled. But when it comes to criticism, pushback when transgender people are dying, when trans youth are being homeless, when they're kicked out of their homes by their parents who reject them, I, I, I it, it's just, yeah, it, it doesn't land well with me. Now, getting to the second part when it comes to DaBaby, here's what he says. In addition to his defense of Rowling, Chappelle addressed the LGBTQ community directly, jokingly asking to negotiate the release of DaBaby, a rapper condemned for making homophobic comments during his Rolling Loud Miami set. Part of the LGBTQ plus community doesn't know DaBaby's history, Chappelle said. He once shot 19-year-old Jalen Craig and killed him in Walmart. This is true. DaBaby shot and killed a man in Walmart in North Carolina. Nothing bad happened to his career. He added, do you see where I'm going with this. In our country, you can shoot and kill a man, but you better not hurt a gay person's feelings. So first of all, I don't think anyone disagrees with the notion that murder is more morally egregious than homophobia. Obviously, who, who's going to disagree with that? But his statement there feels contradictory because on one hand, he says, I want to negotiate with LGBTQ plus people to uncancel the baby. But then he's like, well, the baby really should be canceled because he killed someone. So do you want him canceled or do you want him uncanceled? And I get the point that he's trying to make. He's trying to make it uh, apparent that this is kind of a weird standard that we have as a society where we can give someone a pass for murder, uh, but not homophobia. And I don't really even understand what the baby's point was with those comments. But if he did indeed murder someone, yeah, probably should be canceled. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, I just feel like that's not controversial. Um, maybe people didn't know about it. I just, I don't know. But overall, uh, even if he's making a valid point about mm, he really should have been canceled for murder, the subtext is that gay people are so unreasonable. Gay people are basically authoritarian. They're like the mafia. You say anything about them and they come for you. Is that really the case though? You're not being threatened. You're just getting criticism. I mean, Dave Chappelle made transphobic jokes last time and he still got a Netflix special. Everything is still okay. It's all copacetic. You're still a multimillionaire. So I just don't understand what, what specifically do you expect? Do you want zero criticism? Because in comedy, Dave Chappelle of all people should understand that it is inherently controversial. Comedy lands differently depending on the person, depending on their sense of humor, depending on their predispositions. So, I mean, you should expect criticism whenever you put out a comedy special. I don't think there's any comedy that is going to be super milk toast that doesn't offend at least someone. So I, I just, I don't know what his expectations are. If you criticize gay people, if you make an LGBTQ uh, negative joke, if you make a joke at the expense of trans people, do you expect them to just shut up and take it when their community is under assault? I just don't know what the expectation is. I, d I don't know what he wants. Um, and I do want to share a couple of tweets because I think they do a really good job at putting things into perspective. So Eve Six, the band, actually tweeted this out. Dave Chappelle says Twitter isn't a real place and he's right. The real places are the alleys and underpasses where trans people on the margins are murdered because of societal prejudice that he is lazily defending under the pretense of intellectual bravery. Would love for these multimillionaire turfs to walk a day in those shoes and see how brave they feel. Exactly. A. Reed Ross writes, one of the most famous people in the world basically said he hates trans folks in his big comedy special and conservatives are still like woke censorship 
censorship is worse than the Spanish Inquisition should be pretty obvious who's being put down and it's not the millionaire comedian. And finally, Robin Tran shared a screenshot from the special where he says that he met Caitlyn Jenner, thinks that she's a wonderful person, and she writes he should be canceled just for this, to be honest. Point taken. Because yeah, Caitlyn Jenner is a piece of shit, but um, I don't know if it's that his worldview is shaped by Caitlyn Jenner, who's a pretty out of touch elite herself. Uh, I don't know what it is, but my guess is that he wasn't anticipating the blowback that he got from that last special. And it kind of took him off guard, so he chose to double down, and that kind of built up his perception. I don't know, but this is really, this is disappointing. As someone who is a longtime fan of, of Dave Chappelle, this is heartbreaking to see. Nobody wants to see one of their idols go to the dark side, start punching down, but it's, it's, um, it's shitty. It's, it's sad to see. And he might think that he's saying something that's honest or he's just being factual, but you're not. You're actually wrong and you're ignorant and this is not going to age well. I mean, ask Eddie Murphy how well his old stand-ups where he made homophobic jokes aged well. He wasn't canceled, by the way, for that, but it just didn't age well. If you watch it now, it's, it's difficult to watch, especially if you're a gay person. So, I mean, look, he has already chosen that this is his lane. He feels strongly about this because when you're a millionaire, you have to make mountains out of molehills. You have to try to find some way to feel persecuted. I don't know what it is. I won't try to psychoanalyze him, but this is wrong. And I don't care if you're a fan of Dave Chappelle and you come here and you dislike this video and you call me an SJW. What's wrong is wrong. This is wrong. And I'm going to call it out. Caitlyn Jenner, whom I've met, wonderful person. Caitlyn Jenner was voted woman of the year. Her first year as a woman. Ain't that something? Beat every bitch in Detroit. She's better than all of you. Never even had a period. Ain't that something? Oh, I'd be mad as shit if I was a woman. I'd be mad if I was me. If I was in a BET Awards sitting there and they're like, and the winner for nigger of the year, Eminem, my man. <laughs>